Right, good evening, guys. Ken at Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for January 6, 2023. That sounds funny in my ears. Uh, we'll start with the uh, sniper trade of the day. We're looking at U.S. Steel on three minutes. So there is a gap up. The opening range three high is here. The low is here. So it went from here up, down, recovered, closed here, and opened here in the next bar, and then proceeded through the high of the OR3. So we take our entry, and our standard risk box looks like this. Initial stop is here. Our job is to figure out how soon can we get our stop above the entry so that we can lock in the no lose plus dinner for two and turn this thing into a science project. Check or hold. So it instantly fails. So we've got a minus one. Uh, it does not break through the low of the OR3. So it's still really in the noise. Then it right after we exit, it reverses and comes back up through our OR3 mechanical entry. So I buy it again. And it immediately fails again. So now we're at a minus two. Still has not violated the bottom of the OR3. Takes off, so we buy it again. So the uh, after that little opening gyrations, uh, we're down two R, uh, and it has made its third run. So we've got our standard risk box, standard stop, and again my job is to figure out how soon I can get to a no lose plus dinner for two. And that first, now the first bar runs up to here. So I'm not opposed to moving that stop right now to here and locking that in. Um, the nice thing is it's probably probably already plus one in hand. Uh, but I want to give it room to go. The entire market is looking strong. And the jobs report's getting ready to come along and that's a really strong jobs report so this thing has now given me a couple higher lows uh, I would not be opposed to moving my stop now up to the two bar low or the edge of the dragon take your pick it gives me A little bit of a retracement. The the two bar low does not does not get you stopped out. The R10 wiggle continues. Now we are two R in hand with momentum. Second entry. Looking pretty good. So I'm ready to get my stop up to probably about here call it you know, like the spine of the dragon or even the peak of the dragon third entry because why not so now we're about six are in hand because we've got you know we're, this was about two are 2R plus in hand, so now if we go to this one, so now we're 4R from the first entry, 
and plus an additional 2R. So we're 6R in hand, and this is another 2R battle drill. So just go ahead and do it. Again, because why not? Uh, I thought hard about exiting right there. But we were 6R in hand, and the market was enraged, so I ended up getting out at the same spot. In retrospect, I think I let the market persuade me to stay longer than I think I should have, especially with the third position on. That would have finished a little bit in the money instead of scratching it. And um, I think... I think the other logical place would have been, having seen that high and that high and it didn't make a new high, uh, I think the other logical place to have taken an exit would have been about there when the dragon comes back into the river. Or, uh, I mean, the uh, RL-10 comes back into the dragon. Uh, I think this was slow. I am uninterested in the short side. Because the market is en fuego right now with the um, amazing jobs report, which will probably be revised to the truth later. But uh, I take uh, I take the Kata 2, standard risk box. A fraction. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the second sign of weakness, I was tempted to take that one short uh, because of the lower highs had broken the PSR flip. Uh, it was getting ready to come down to test this support. Maybe a third of the time I'll take that short. Uh, I'm still hoping for the upside. Now I'm really feeling stupid for not having taken that short. But I've felt stupid before. And now this is feeling like uh, finding support. Now it's not a cot of two. This entry here is not going to be a cot of two because we have lower lows. But that is a sufficient sell-off to be significant and then failure to fail further so that would now make this a supported spring crossing so uh, standard risk box there's your piece our flip the blue box box represents one R. so <coughs> excuse me we're about one R in hand 2R in hand. I would think about a 2R battle drill here, but we've already, uh, we're getting close to the end of the day, so I'm just going to let that run. And it finishes with about 2.5R. Let's see. Almost 3R. Uh, so that trade sequence there, just by itself, pays for those first two uh, my quick minus ones. So what we end up with is about 6R from the initial series of three entries that exited here, and then probably another one. So maybe 6 to 7R, depending on, you know, fills and commissions and whatnot. So uh, reasonable day at work in U.S. Steel. And that's what we look like. So you just... Sometimes that happens. You just keep firing. You get lots of ammunition. Each trade is one trade of the next 1,000 trades I'm going to take. All right, let's look at... Um, there were only a couple uh, uh, traders today posted, posted some charts, so let's just get those knocked out right away while we're here. This is, oh no, my brother puts, no, he didn't. There you go. Uh, from Satya. He's got one in Alcoa. 
which was his primary focus today. <clears throat> um, he's got the OR3, which failed for minus one. He then takes it short and gets paid for plus one, so he has scratched. He tries another continuation, which is a minus 0.3. He waits for the PSR flip to get long rather than stopping and reversing. That's the choice. Uh, but he gets paid, gets paid, scratches, caught a two, gets paid. PSR flip, waits for the collapsing dragon, gets paid, gets paid. Micro loss and scratch and that's 2.4 so that's a making contact that's a contact hitter 2.4 for the day and good work on FSLR first solar he's gonna make another 2.5 but he notices that you know he misses this piece our clip that would exit here he does get the short to pay for three uh, maybe misses the long that would probably have scratched uh, micro loss here but then misses this one and that was part of that same long grind that you saw in US Steel uh, which rewarded so he comes in with 2.5 in FSLSR and 2.4 in Alcoa for 4.9 for the day and we can make a living on that so good work. <clears throat> All right, our 30 minute chart today, uh, going into the close of the week. So this is all that essentially the holiday chop. But after that first week of being back, it really had the same size of daily move but it closed very strongly at the top and I feel like it's cleared that hump and on the strength of that jobs report there's going to be a lot of people talking up that market and I would expect a serious run to the long side um, on, uh, mon on Monday that would be unsurprising when we go now to the 30-day lens, the 30-day look back with daily charts, uh, we notice that hey, this thing pushed to a new 5-day and 10-day high. Uh, the PSAR flipped today, so that's a positive sign, uh, which makes our next target here at the RL10 at about 396. Peak of the Dragon, 402. Peak of the RL10. 406, all of that is in range. We got a little Kata 2 kind of action going on. So this is the sound of the market trying to engage, trying to get some traction. And it's getting there on the basis of that jobs report. That's going to have some lingering power. In the 150 day look back, uh, we're still kind of in the middle of this 150 day range. You know, there's your high, there's your low. So your extremes, whoops, your extremes are all back on that half. And so meanwhile, this feels like leg one up, leg two, one leg back, and now it's starting to make that next run. So in a very real sense, we've got a Kata 2 formation setting up. And with uh, one leg up targeting at about 406, and then if that if it gets through there, that second leg up targeting uh, 430. So those are both in range for next week. Uh, so let's see how it gets started. <clears throat> um, if we look uh, out to the to the nine day, so now we're going to widen that aperture. Now these this is SPY. And each bar is nine days, so almost two weeks. Uh, you can see even on the long term, we've got a little bit of a Kata 2 forming. And the the important indicator on this one is the RL10, which is up. So don't worry about price hitting those little PSRs. What we're looking for is the relationship 
between the RL10 and the PSAR. So this last time that it ran up to 440, that was strong enough to flip the PSAR. And even though there was a bit of a sell-off, it held support. So this is just part of a, you know, a healing process inside here. And we've got, you know, almost three months of those PSARs holding. In spite of the noise, this is still a pretty favorable condition for early stage growth in the long term. When we dial into the three-day bars, now this is the SPY on three-day bars. That's the fast version of this. Now you can see that it's a little more pronounced in the Kata 2. And even though this little sell-off was enough to flip the PSR, there's some evidence of rising lows and starting to penetrate the dragon. And so this is starting to feel like some healing power. Now, it's not official until it gets above about, uh, let's say, into the 400s or 401. And then if this breaks out, then our target would be 430. So there's some room to the upside potential here. The, this support level at about 380 feels crucial. So as long as it can stay north of that 380, then this has potential to be a turning point after a long and painful year in 2002. But there's some January optimistic money getting ready to uh, get into play here. If we look at our all of the regression lines, again, we're going to notice that the uh, the 270, the daddy rabbit, uh, the downward slope has flattened out. On the basis of this strong upward move, that was enough to turn the slope from negative to flat. That move was also strong enough to turn the RL90 from down to flat to shaping up. And so when the 90 to 70 gap is getting wider, that is the longer term trend starting to get traction and taken off. Even though the next pair, the RL30 and the RL10, have had a bit of a pullback, it's not enough to even budge the RL90, which is cruising northward. And then you notice that the 10 has fallen, and you got the Kata 2, and the RL10 is rolling, and that just leaves the RL30 left to consider, which is the health of the current trend. And that is in an owl condition. The piece are just flipped, and so it's made the half of what could be a cup and handle. So this is about as positive as we've seen in the last, you know, six months. Even though this was a strong upward move, that was a tactical move, but you got to get the longer term trend pushing to the upside, which it now is. That's longer term money is starting to become confident. We're going to have a Congress that won't be able to pass any legislation. So the status quo for the next two years is going to be actually good. That that stasis is going to be good. So uh, I'm cautiously optimistic about where we are. We're close to getting back into the sideways condition. And this is the sign of a healing market. This is what bottoming feels like and the slow grind as this thing starts turning. So this feels pretty positive. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. Um. Those are our road guards out here in Kansas. A young fellow looking back at me saying, what's up? Um, possible turning point in the owl condition in the broad market uh, showing some signs of strength. All right, so today in the sectors, um, let's just, we'll look at the, let's look at the downside first so we can end on a positive note.
also um, the S&P, our baseline, was up 2.3. To the downside, you had uh, uh, four of the five indexes were worse. So you had the Russell at two and a quarter, diamonds and emerging markets at 2.1, uh, treasuries at 1.84. Uh, only tech was stronger today, um, and that was up there at uh, 2.76. So the tech leadership finally comes through today and starts powering this thing north. All right, so let's look at the let's look at the upside first since we're already here. All right, so again we've got the S and P at 2.3. You got uh, Staples, or I'm sorry, uh, discretionary 2.35. Tesla came in at two and a half. Uh, silver, clean energy, the fangs, wood, the other wood, staples, Mexico, residential real estate, tech, wheat and precious metals, materials, and lithium. That whole sector complex, you know, up to 3.5%, whereas the market was at 2.3. So you're starting to see some real strength inside here. Uh, Brazil at 3.85%. Uranium, five and a quarter. Ethereum, another strong day, 9.5%. Uh, that looks like a real move to me. I am hoping that is the case. So if I could talk up the market, I would. <laughs> All right, so um, let's look at our uh, specials now, the individual targets. You have Squarespace at six. Here's two of our three metals. There's uh, Cliff Natural Resources and U.S. Steel at 5.7 and 6%. The entire semi index, our little placeholders there, very strong. So here's tech at 2.7. Here's semis at 4, 4 and a quarter, 5%. That is a strong indicator of where the juice is. Boeing just continues to crush it. Apple, nice big rebound. So all of the leaders that you would expect to be doing excellent in a tech rebound uh, are, are leading the way today. So Alcoa was the only metal that was below the S&P, and it was only up 1.9. Devon Energy, 1.76. So let's take a quick look at the ones that were on the downside today. There's the S&P again at 2.3. Um, finance, 2.2. Oil exploration, 2%. Uh, this cluster of Aussie dollar, commercial real estate, ARC innovation, uh, biotech, blended commodities, Bitcoin. Now we're at 0.28. Here's the break-even point between winners and losers. Oil at flat. And then ARC genomics, agriculture, marijuana, and VIX. Down 2.3. Individual companies that did not do well. It was the financial disruptors of uh, Robinhood, PayPal, and Coinbase were all below the, the market. And then Microsoft is lagging Apple in the in the recovery. So they had a harsh sell-off, worse than Apple. So this was the the beginnings of a recovery in Microsoft. But that's still not persuasive because the market was much better, as was tech. Okay. So that's a quick look at the sectors. <clears throat> uh, we'll shift to the um, we'll shift to the weekend report, starting with the strategy report, the weekly version. So we're right on the boundary here of, um, uh, you know, bearish normal. We're almost ready to get into sideways. We're within half a percent of the bearish market becoming sideways. At minus 2%, this thing shifts up into sideways normal. Um, the risk Z and the risk index are still showing a favorable opportunity to the upside, which we saw started moving today. You can see our current holdings 
uh, a nice blend between two globals and then the conservative Dow and ETF 13. ETF 2 increased from 60% to 80% exposure as two more indexes uh, crossed above their four-month moving average, so that's starting to look uh, favorable. Uh, we've seen all the, the health checks already, excuse me. So ETF 13 for BMR. Uh, all of them except tech and Latin America are above their four-month moving average. Um, real strength now in the internationals. That's emerging markets. And Asia less Japan and the Euro-Asia blend. So that's the globals crushing it. So um, opportunities are abounding. And then inside the U.S. indexes, diamonds are the strongest, followed by mid caps, the broad market, small caps, and then tech is way down here. ETF 22 adds the XL series. So that gives you industrials and energy doing even better. And I, I think I would favor the industrials more than energy right now. Energy tends to be cyclic. Industrials are kind of the, the leading indicator for a, an improvement in the business cycle because they're making the things that service industries use. So that's a good sign. ETF 32 adds some company ETFs and some narrow focused ETFs. So you get the European 350 index in the first position. So that's the equivalent of like Europe's S&P 500. So that's where the strength is. And China has come roaring back this week. So more room to go on that. I would expect to see more of China in the short term. Uh, weakness in agriculture and blended commodities. And uh, weakness in Brazil still. Clean energy also getting smoked heavily. <clears throat> Inside the Dow, uh, we've been tracking this guy all week. Boeing and Caterpillar, Nike, Merck, and J.P. Morgan. Those are the clear winners for individual companies. Had a nice bounce in DuPont in the industrials and Verizon, Intel, and Disney. So this is part of that recovery we just saw in the uh, in the semiconductors. That's a lot of ground to make up. So let's keep an eye on the semis. The semis just took off today. Let's see if there's follow through. Uh, the old reliables. Apple and Microsoft, how long can they broadly lag the rest of the Dow? You know, if tech is going to come into an ascendancy and these two have been smashed, and especially Microsoft, that looks to me like the uh, pretty safe value play for trading. I want to get started with an intraday trade, but um, I would um, I would be unsurprised to see a, uh, to see a lot of buying in Microsoft to get it on sale. Uh, we'll shift to the ETF regional report. Uh, the U.S. is a mixed bag here. You can see that Europe and Asia are both stronger than the U.S. Um, and it's the value plays, the staples, and the Dow are the strongest, and tech has been the weakest until today. So that's a quick read there. And note, again, the, the uh, industrial sector, XLI, has been just stealthily getting it done. <coughs> like a lot of that is the uh, is that defense sector in there too. In ETF two, uh, green and green has been great, continues to be great. So the leaders here continue to lead. That's everything north of that line. Uh, oil equipment. Europe, Italy, Germany, gold miners, um, Europe again, France, European stocks. So, again, that's the strength in the globals no matter where you look. Now, green and white 
was good, now great, and you can exploit new strength. That's where you start seeing these. We're looking at the strength and consistency. So that green and white is uh, Pacific dividends, metals and mining, and European value or global value. That's good. Um, Mexico and industrials, solid growth in EFA. So that's still early days in EFA outperforming SPY. Now, white and green, you're seeing the former leaders starting to slow down a little bit, and that's uh, home builders, insurance, and energy starting to slow down. So this is where we can pick up that tidal, tidal forces moving, right? So now we're looking at the top 30 ETFs based on average daily dollar volume of the last 30 trading days. And we're looking at the ATR percentage to find the best targets for short-term trading. And that's going to be the ones that are liquid. That's anything on this chart is liquid. And the ones that are exceptionally volatile, that's the ones here in the green. And that's going to give us gold miners. Now notice that the gold miners have a 3% daily volatility, but gold itself is 1.2%. So the gold mining companies are two and a half times more volatile than gold. So if you want to trade those, GDX seems like it might be easier. Um, Brazil, um, biotech and semiconductors, that's maybe a nice way to play that burst in, instead of trying to pick the winner between Texas Instruments, Intel, and NVIDIA, might just do SPY, or uh, SMH, excuse me. Uh, and then uh, oil exploration because of that oscillating nature of the energy sector. That's always a good short-term swing trader. We'll shift to the daily reports now. We've seen the sniper trade of the day and the health checks. We'll go right to dashboard one. And again, we've seen this improvement. We're very close to moving up into sideways normal. Uh, there's our 10-day NDX looking better. Uh, Boeing, McDonald's, Diamonds on the minimum pain. Maximum pain remains Tesla, Microsoft, United Health, and Alcoa. Um, I think Microsoft is ready to go. The metals started their moves today, and Tesla is the big question mark. Is it going to follow through? We don't know. Follow the price. Dow Tactical, uh, this is a good sign when you get so many dojis, so low-range days, only a couple auto framers, better than two to one, no swing patterns, but big, strong moves on all those look-back periods in Boeing and Caterpillar. That's where the relative strength is, fellas. Uh, DuPont, um, Merck continues to do well. Nike, big breakout. That's a broad market improvement right there across the board. So no surprises. The ETF tactical, also quite a large number of 10-day breakouts. So that whole stack in here. But notice the big breakouts here in gold and Europe and emerging markets. That, to me, is the stealth idea. Everybody, hey, the U.S. and all that, it's back. Hey, these international markets are really benefiting from a recovery in the U.S. So uh, remain exposed to that opportunity. Uh, just a couple in the, in the auto framer. Notice United Health is 8 to 1. Oof. Tesla still 2.5 to 1. Microsoft 3 to 1 on those standard mechanical swing trades. Only United Health and Oil Exploration were uh, squeezes today. Looking at the regression line fractals, um, Tesla remains the, the best value opportunity at 6.7 ATRs below its RL270. The most overheated one and the ones that are raging 
Boeing and JP Morgan are over 10 ATRs above their RL270, so just continuing to run. Uh, the value plays inside the ETFs, natural gas, oil, oil explor exploration, agriculture in Brazil. These are all um, uh, basically European ETFs, you know, Germany, Italy, South Africa, I can't remember, and, and an energy ETF. Looking at sniper targets, beginning with the Godzilla. Just one Godzilla left in the S&P, and that one is enraged and moving, so Bax still has plenty of room to recover. And then Coinbase and Marijuana are stealthy Godzillas in our tactical symbol set. And the one-day movers, this will get your attention. A 7.7 .7 Sigma move. Look at all the ones that were stronger than 3 Sigma today. That's how big the range expansion was. Southwest Airlines. Um, interesting stuff there. NVIDIA. Now, notice that it was one of the quiet ones as measured by the five-day move, but the one-day move was a large. So this thing is something that has been quiet for four days, and the fifth day had a nice big move. That's the beginning of the move in semiconductors. And Apple in the same condition. Very, very quiet, abnormally quiet for five days, but a big breakout. Uh, and then LHX, same thing. So those divergences are alerting you to what is the first day of a strong move coming out of five days of quietude. Uh, in the four seasons, getting dominated by spring and, this, and summer in this little recovery that we're into. Tail of the tape in the multi-time frame NDX. Winners are going to win. Caterpillar and Boeing, not surprising. Merck, not surprising. ExxonMobil, Johnson & Johnson, not surprising. And the same thing over in here. Europe, emerging markets, blended globals. Mexico doing well. So hard to find uh, any losers, with the exception of Microsoft, a real lagger. That's why it's the value play to me. And then oil is the anomaly in the ETF said It's starting to, to uh, lose ground, which is part of the reason it's contributing to gains over in here as their cost of energy goes down. Uh, the top 10 traders, based on our frog analysis, which is a combination of strong frog quality number and large reliable daily volatility, sorted in order of most value for trading. Tesla, Clean Energy, Disney, Alcoa, Apple, Brazil, Oil Exploration, Boeing, Metals and Mining, and Oil. So that's our top 10 based on trading value. And if you want wanted to emphasize ones that had the strongest consistency, you'd be looking for frog quality numbers higher than three, which would t point you towards Brazil and Disney. But I just, I like those top two. I love all that volatility. Um, this little move out of the holiday doldrums feels strong. It was enough to turn the slope of the RL30 back up. It's forming a cot of two here on the long-term slope and on the stretch relative to the 200-day moving average, you're getting a cot of two action. This has a chance to make a 5% gain next week in the broad markets. And uh, same, same. I notice our regression lines. The 90 is looking good, as we saw in the first RLFF, and the RL30 is making that owl move to the upside. I like it. It's finding support 
uh, near the bottom of the river in a cot of two and ready to go. Uh, next week, I'm, you know, I don't want to predict, but a 5% move would not surprise me. All right, that's everything we want to brief for tonight. We'll get this published and posted, and thank you very much. I should also say uh, we're getting ready to start a new cohort <clears throat> of the um, uh, Creativity 202 course. What we're going to do is start the new set of students on probably the first or second week of February. And uh, we've got two different nights of the week, when, or two different days of the week, where we're, where we're doing the optional discussion, live discussion, which we record. So we've already got 60 of those sessions recorded, which you have access to, and you get lifetime access to the course. And uh, the cohort of students that participated for the last 30 weeks are have all decided to continue to participate. So you're going to get a chance to listen to them and work with them. We'll still do one lesson a week, but you'll just work on the lesson that you're on, and then everybody will contribute their little uh, personal story of growth that they did for that week and you're going to see a really powerful uh, collaborative learning environment here that's been our experience with creativity 202 that's the best thing we ever did uh, to be honest so uh, we've got a new uh, a new co cohort enrolling and uh, if you're a subscriber and within the sound of my voice uh, there's a thousand dollar coupon discount uh, compared to the market price so you can get in at about two thousand uh, and that's going to last uh, the formal instruction 35 weeks, but you get lifetime access to the course, and that is a uh, that's a gold mine. Just as a result of that of that course, we've started four new businesses, and developed two new trading strategies, and have written a book. So there's there's a direct payoff. Uh, it leads to action, um, and there's weekly momentum that builds in there. So I would strongly encourage you to consider taking that course and get one of the available slots. Okay. If you're interested, just give me a shout. Uh, that's everything I got for tonight. Take good care, and we shall see you uh, tomorrow night for uh, Swing Trade Frame Reviews.